other. It's not even about spying on an American citizen. It's about something even more. It's about an attempt to change the course of American history using the most powerful agencies in the United States government. How dare you? And that's my open. Tell me what you think on my Facebook page, Twitter, and Instagram. Hashtag Judge Janine. Joining me now with reaction to my opening statement and much more, Congressman Ron DeSantis, who's been at the forefront of getting this stuff released from the beginning. Good evening, Congressman. Good evening, Judge. I guess it was everything you said it was going to be that everyone said it wasn't going to be. And the question now is, what happens next? I think there's going to be a number of things. Uh, Chairman Nunes is, has said publicly this is going to be a phase two where you're going to have another memo go through the same process dealing with other agencies, including the State Department and their role in this. And, and I think that could potentially be explosive. I also think that the memo has raised problems for some of the individuals that you mentioned, including former FBI Director Jim Comey. I mean, he was not candid with the Intelligence Committee um, in terms of telling them the genesis of the dossier. So I think they're going to bring him in, put him under oath. But I think he's exposed himself for potentially making false statements. Of course, he leaked FBI documents when he, after he got fired. Some of those documents may have had classified information, so he may have exposure there as well. And then one of the things I think really needs to be drilled down on, Judge, um, a lot of people are focusing on the FISA. Obviously, that's significant. The role of Bruce Orr, who was one of the top Justice Department officials, and his wife is working for Fusion GPS. And basically what happened is there was a direct pipeline from the Clinton campaign to the upper echelons of the Justice Department and FBI through Bruce Orr, because Hillary is is funding uh, oh, Fusion, right. and then Fusion is sending all their negative uh, fake research on Trump right to the but, Obama Justice but, Department. But you know I mean, what? that's really, really problematic. It, it, it's, it's problematic, but we knew this was a problem a year ago. So here's the question, Congressman. Who's going to investigate and prosecute? Who's going to bring on a, a, a grand jury, issue subpoenas, do everything they didn't do in the Hillary Clinton email case? Who? Rod well, Rosenstein? Is, there, no, he's close no. to Comey. He's close to Mueller. In fact, Rod Rosenstein was a guy who walked Mueller over to be interviewed for FBI director. And when the president didn't hire him the next day, Mueller appoint, uh, uh, Rosenstein appoints him to be special counsel. If that isn't vengeance, I don't know what is. Well, Ann, Rosenstein signed one of the FISA extensions, so he would be conflicted out of doing it. There's going to be a strong push in the Congress, the strongest we've had yet, uh, for a special counsel to look into the FISA abuse and related matters. I think it's got to be someone who's not a part of the swamp, someone from outside who, Washington. Who's going to do it? Who? Well, you're going to have to get Jeff Sessions to, to make the appointment. And, Do you uh, think that's going to happen? You and I figured this out six months ago. He's in the middle of it, and he can't figure out that his job as a chief prosecutor in the United States is to start looking into this and stop with this namby-pamby stuff. Well, here's the difference, though, Judge. Six months ago... Uh, you didn't have Bruce Orr demoted. You didn't have Rebicki on his way out. You didn't have McCabe uh, forced to resign. You didn't have James That's Baker reassigned. You didn't have any cups. of that. So digging in I'm has led to all this. People are dropping cups. like flies at the Justice That's Department and FBI. Enough. Sessions has to notice that. Yep. But you and I both know that that's like changing a parking space. They need to be made criminally responsible. Anyway, uh, Congressman DeSantis, I want to thank you. You started all this. And I give you a lot of credit. I really do. Thanks, Judge. Good to talk to you. All yeah. right. We just heard from the president on Twitter about an hour ago, and now we're joined live by one of his top spokesperson, White House Press Secretary Hogan Gidley. All right. Good evening, Hogan. I have one question to ask you. The president tweeted today uh, that he was totally vindicated uh, as a result of this uh, FISA memo. Does this mean that he's calling on Robert Moore, uh, uh, Mueller to end the investigation? I wouldn't say he's calling on Robert Mueller to, to end the investigation, but what I can say is the president has, has been clear that this memo has raised some serious concerns about the integrity of the decisions made at the highest levels of the FBI and the DOJ when they can take the most intrusive surveillance mechanisms and methods and use them on American citizens 
based on nothing but a campaign document funded and paid for by Hillary Clinton, that should be alarming to all Americans. It's not just alarming, it's, it, it's, it's critical because it is a, uh, uh, it is misleading the court. These people, sw I, know, I used to sign warrants all the time. I mean, right. that, not a warrant at this level of FISA court, but you get that affiant to come before you and he has to swear that what he's telling you is the truth. He has to satisfy several prongs. None of that that was done here. Right, and it was a document that obviously was omitted in the, in the, in the FISA uh, warrant process. They did not tell this to the judge. Forget the fact that it was from the Clintons in the first place. I mean, obviously this thing was full of inaccuracies, but they didn't even tell the judge that's where they got the information from. That is a clear violation, and, and, and obviously this memo goes to expose that process, and I think all Americans are deeply concerned at this moment. Well, you know, with the, with the FISA application and, and what we found out, look, everybody's talking about this. I want to know who is the lawyer who accompanied the FBI agent to go before the FISA court, okay? Whether it's Baker, Comey, McCabe, Rosenstein, uh, all those guys, whoever that judge was, he needs to do what he or she needs to do whatever they have to do to get them on the red carpet because they made a misrepresentation to the court, the highest, most secret court in the United States besides the Supreme Court. That judge is the person I'm waiting to hear from because they either took him or they lied to him. Wait. Either way, it's bad. You, you just mentioned it, it could quite possibly be the tip of the iceberg, and, and, I, and I don't disagree with that. But it's obvious now that the, the Congress is the investigative body here. This originated from Congress, this memo, and they've got uh, their work cut out for them because obviously they're facing obstruction at, at every turn as they try to move through this process. But uh, they're the ones that, that, that have this, uh, the, the, the originated this memo. They're the ones that are going to have to get to the bottom of this. But it's very clear this is opening up uh, quite, quite a big can of worms if you will in this town. All right. What about Rod Rosenstein? Uh, you know, I, I saw the president's reaction when he was asked about him. Does, it, Rod Rosenstein is still there. Does he have the confidence of the president? Look, uh, I serve at the pleasure of the president, as does uh, Rod Rosenstein. If, if the president is displeased with you, believe me, you'll know it and you won't be working there. But I will say this. There are no conversations uh, or considerations for firing Rod Rosenstein at the White House. Oh, boy. Hogan Gidley, thanks so much for being with us this evening. Thanks so much, Judge. All right. And here with more insight into the memo and what's up, former Trump campaign manager David Bossy. All right, David, are you as fired up as I am? Oh, I am. <laughs> Judge, this is this is exactly what the president was talking about. Yeah. It was a rigged election back then, and that's what the, that's what the president knew then, and that's what we have found out to be a fact today. You know, David, what's amazing is when the president first came out and he said, you know, that they were wiretapping at Trump Tower and all that other stuff. Everybody mocked him. They ridiculed him. They made fun of him. Obama comes out and he's so condescending and so insulted. It's true. Yeah, it, it was 100% true. It's an outrage that what the, what the American people are just finding out and what they're learning is that the FBI used a dirty dossier that has now been completely discredited uh, to to go to the FISA court, to get a FISA judge to, to issue this uh, wiretap. It is an outrage. It, it should bother all Americans. And, and I'll be honest with you, I, I can't understand why the New York Times, Washington Post, and others are so troubled with, the, with us wanting to press the federal government for the answers of why they were doing this. It is so dirty. It is so corrupt. It's, and and it's Judge, sad. you know this. You understand this better than most because the men and women of the FBI, America's premier law enforcement agency, doesn't deserve this. They are made up, that, that organization's made up of tremendous people who do a great job making America and America safe. You don't even have to say that, David. You know, everybody's saying the FBI is great, the DOJ. We're, we all well, know well, that. It's these yeah, but people it's who infected it at the top. It's and a, David, that's right. 
I'll That's bet right. you get calls like I get calls, all right, from, from FBI agents who are disgusted. Right. They are angry. You know, this thing should have been handled in a field office. Instead, it's handled at the upper echelon by a cabal on the seventh floor uh, at the FBI. They're all and pals. Few, and a few bad apples. A few bad apples have besmirched this organization, and that's really what troubles me, uh, is that we need to honor and hold them up, and we need to do a, jo a good job of cleaning this out so that we can get on with the business of what the FBI is supposed to be doing. All right, let me let me ask you, you know, David, some of the stuff that they, they've been saying about the memo that, you know, is like Chicken Little. If this memo is released, the sky is going to fall. All right, so um, we have grave concerns. This is from the FBI uh, about material omissions of fact that impact the memo's accuracy. And Danella, uh, Nancy Pelosi says Donald Trump has surrendered his constitutional responsibility as commander-in-chief by releasing the unredacted memo. It undermines our national security and, and basically is a bouquet to his friend Putin. What are these <laughs> she, people talking about? Yeah, she also said the tax cut was going to be Armageddon. You know, they, these, they, they, they hate this president more than they love America. That is the fundamental problem with the Democrat Party today. They see hatred th through their eyes. That's all they see. I've never seen and anything like that. It, it is remarkable to me. And they do this every day. They say the sky is falling and it doesn't. And, and the American people are catching on to it. And they're going to continue because they can't help themselves. Just look at what the president did at the State of the Union. He made them look oh. like the buffoons that they are. Yes, absolutely. David Bossy, so good to have you on tonight. Thanks, Judge. What a night on justice tonight. Mike Huckabee, Katrina Pearson still coming up, but next, you haven't heard all the takes on the new Nez memo until you hear Ann Coulter's. Ann is on deck and standing by live. Don't change that. Welcome back to Justice. We continue tonight with our big story, the release of this explosive memo and the continued fallout. Here with her take on it all, conservative columnist and best-selling author Ann Coulter. All right, Ann, I want you to take a look at this. Uh, we've got uh, MSNBC, uh, Rachel Maddow. That's it. <laughs> That's all they've got. This is what all the hype was about. For what is it, two weeks now they've been hyping this? I will admit to being shocked that this is what they released. It was just, it was, it was just kind of like a sad trombone. We only bring that out for very special occasions. And so you have a memo that's been declassified. And in the memo, they say that Andrew McCabe used a document that he said he couldn't have gotten a warrant without that was full of lies, that he didn't tell the court about the bias of individuals involved or that a uh, candidate paid for it. Your take. Well, <laughs> Well, for one thing, we now know what complete liars the Democrats and all of these hysterical, you know, alleged national security and law enforcement experts are about, oh, it's going to blow up any sort of, maybe we'll have terrorist attacks. What will we do if this memo comes out and then it comes out, oh, that's all it is. Well, there were people who had seen the memo who knew what the information was. And I think at this point, I mean, their argument is the fact that it, and by the way, it makes me totally love, and I think it makes most Americans love Trump even more. It really, right. it illustrates the point that it was always Donald Trump against both the Republican and the Democratic Party. It is Washington, D.C. against the people. And when you see the way high-level officials, not, as everyone has said, the rank and file, but high-level officials at the FBI um, were using funded documents funded by the Hillary campaign, someone who hated um, Donald Trump and didn't want him elected. And by the way, who started the whole Russia investigation? I don't think a big enough point has been made of this. It was Peter Strzok. Right. He was the one who started the investigation. He's the one who's texting with his mistress. Um, um, but I do think that Rosenstein probably, they're two separate issues. One is the Rosenstein, the civil liberties violations. Right. Um, and I think Rosenstein should probably go. I don't know why Trump was ever. <laughs> you think? 
Why was Trump ever hiring well, he, members he, of the swamp to begin with? I'm kind of mad at Trump for that. There are plenty of lawyers out in America who went to Harvard, too. Well, um, you didn't have to get move somebody over from the swamp, so he deserves what he gets. But now that he's found out, he should fire Rosenstein. Mueller, however, he, he, hasn't, he hasn't done any of this. The danger with Mueller is he's looking like Patrick Fitzgerald. Remember the one independent counsel we yes, had? Yes, I do. There was no crime. Right. And so I, all these people on TV keep talking about a perjury trap. They obviously have not the first idea what a perjury trap is. It's not just putting someone under, under oath when, ooh, you know what the truth is. We think this person is going to lie. No, it's when you are putting people under oath when there's no crime. Yeah. And that's what Patrick Fitzgerald did. He found out there was nothing illegal okay. about revealing a name. And then he puts all these people You're under oath. Valerie Plain, somebody and disagrees. They somebody, yeah. And, and you, you know find amazing and so if there is no crime here and it's looking like there's no crime, remember that the entire Russia argument, the entire Russia collusion argument comes from these four members who, I mean, members, they weren't members of right. Trump's staff. They were right. hangers on mostly. I mean, it's Roger Stone, um, great guy but he keeps offering to okay, but testify let, 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 publicly. Let, let, let's try to... You I, have I Carter Page. Here. Carter Page, Papadopoulos. You have um, Sessions and Papadopoulos. Right. Every single one of them has fallen apart, and all you hear them say on the other networks and the Democrats is, well, this could be part of an obstruction of justice. Well, number one, no, if there's no crime, he shouldn't be putting any, right. anyone... Right. But and number two... by the way, is not a crime. You can't put... Zero plus zero plus zero together. So at this point, I think we have a reason to ask, what is it that Mueller's investigating? The whole thing was smoke and mirrors created by the swamp. Okay, it's not just smoke and mirrors created by the swamp. It is it, worse than that. It's going to the highest, one of the highest courts in the country. Right. And I would think that the judge up there, because look, if someone came to me, a cop came to me and said, hey, judge, I want a warrant. I put him under oath. He swears to this and that. And he's pulling the wool over my eyes. I'd have his badge. That's the end of it. You don't don't right. do that. How is the judge and the court tolerating right. this? And how is, you know, if you got James Comey going in for an extension on the warrant <laughs> after he's just told the president's unverified, then how do you go before a judge and get an extension on an even higher level right. of probable cause? And Rosen, yeah, Rosenstein himself. No, the, the, but the civil, the civil liberties issues, I do think, are different from the Russia collusion story by itself. Right. Um, it just seems to me both of them are falling apart. And the argument that is being made on the other side is, oh, no, 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 the sleazy, unverified dossier. And that was just one of lots of evidence. That's why it's out of context. It's out of context. So, okay, can't the president declassify the entire thing? So I think he ought to. He can, but, but I, you know, I think he's worried about making himself, interjecting himself in this. No, no, but no, see, no, no, here's no. The This thing. is corruption. If they no, had no, no. other evidence that supported the <laughs> wiretap, why put in a me uh, the dossier that's full of lies? If you really had other evidence, right. why is the dossier? Why well, did Andrew McCabe swear well, that also, it was it? And also, I think very oh, importantly, why why hasn't <laughs> why why are you bothering with the Manafort stuff and the little cheap stuff if they're if they have proof that Carter Page was conspiring on behalf of Donald Trump to inject yeah. millions of dollars into the campaign? Well, we would have indicted the president already. Well, but but here's the thing: Carter Page is walking around because he hasn't done anything thing apparently and uh, you got Manafort indicted for something that is fruit of the poisonous tree for which he should move uh, to have the uh, the charges. But also is Ann not Coulter. collusion. It's not collusion and Coulter. Thanks. We could go on for an hour. <laughs> Governor Mike Huckabee still on deck tonight and next tonight's panel has a lot to get into. Katrina Pierce and Richard Fowler ready to talk about the memo and where we go from here. Stay right there guys. Live from America's News Headquarters, I'm Alicia Acuna. A lone gunman wounded six African immigrants during a two-hour shooting rampage in Italy. Police say the attack was racially motivated. One of the victims was seriously injured and needed surgery. The suspect is white and reportedly has an extreme right background with both neo-Nazi and neo-fascist ties. The shooting spree follows the arrest of a Nigerian refugee for the murder of an 18-year-old Italian woman. The crime has fueled anti-immigrant sentiments. Televangelist Pat Robertson is recovering from a stroke, but the 87-year-old is expected to make a full recovery. The founder of the Christian Broadcasting Network was rushed to the hospital on Friday. That's after a family member noticed symptoms. I'm Alicia Cunha. Now back to Justice with Judge Janine.
Dems and liberals continue to attack the White House and the GOP for releasing the FISA memo. Some saying it was dangerous, and others like advertising executive Donny Deutsch calling people to action. Take a listen. Our democracy is under siege. People need to start taking to the streets. This is a dictator. <laughs> wow. Joining me now, my fired up political panel tonight, former Trump campaign spokesperson Katrina, Katrina Pearson and Democratic strategist, Fox News contributor Richard Fowler. All right, uh, Richard, do people need to take to the streets? I don't know if they need to take to the streets, but I think it's very important that we outline some of the facts about this memo. Uh, I think one of the facts that's more, one of the, the facts that I found to be the most interesting is the case of Peter Strzok. So there has been a lot of talk about Peter Strzok being insanely biased against the Clinton administration based on those text messages. But what we've also learned out, Fox was reported two days ago, that Peter Strzok was also responsible for drafting the memo in late October that led to the reopening of the Clinton campaign, possibly costing her the election. So that means even if he was biased, he still didn't take away from him doing his job. Uh, Katrina, do you know why Strzok called for the <laughs> reopening of that uh, investigation? Well, Judge, he had to. He had to get ahead of the media because the media was about to break the story on the That's emails right. that were found on Anthony Weiner's uh, server. So the problem we have here is the Democrats are refusing to see one key issue in this memo, and no one seems to be talking about it, Judge, and that's the timeline. First, the FBI cannot label an American citizen a foreign agent unless they are knowingly engaging on uh, co uh, com compiling intelligence for a foreign entity. Mm -hmm. Then you can't get a FISA warrant unless they prove that you're an agent. And as you said in your previous segment, Carter Page is still walking around. <laughs> but you will know that this investigation started in July after Trump clinched the nomination and the same month the FBI exonerated Hillary Clinton from her email scandal. July the importance of, 16, of that point is right. that we know July, exactly. Yeah. We July. know that the FBI was in the tank for Hillary. They were careless. They were communicating on their government issued devices and they were shell shocked when Donald Trump won that election. And that is why we're having this discussion uh, uh, today. You, you Your know, Honor, I have a couple of responses to sure. that. Response number one on this Carter Page situation. We know from reporting that Carter Page was on the FBI's radar since 2013, number one. And number two, this, met, this warrant was renewed four different times. And for a FISA warrant to be renewed, it has to go back to the judge and you have to prove that you're gaining information from this wiretap that is leading to, be, that is leading to moving the investigation forward. So that means every time, even if even if you give them the fact that they use this particular dossier, they went back to the judge four different times, and it could be four different judges saying, "We have you." This is this it's for not, the last ninety four days. Judges. It could have been. We don't it, know no, that. It's not. We don't know that. But this though. is exactly but why. We don't know that. This is not. exactly why. But we don't know that. But this it's is not. why a second special counsel needs to be ordered to investigate these abuses that were uncovered in the House memo. This is extremely important, Judge, because you have American citizens whose lives have been uprooted, whose lives livelihoods are being destroyed. And if you know anything about how like the FBI handles its counter and ter counter terrorism, Which American citizens they don't lives open, have been uprooted? Richard, they don't open a case which investigating citizens? a person. They open I'm up a case investigating a subject have been, matter. Have been uprooted. Let's, we're, ta we're talking about the FBI here. They open up investigation on a subject matter, i.e. Trump campaign collusion with Russia, they and they find people counter, to put a, a under that umbrella, to, and then a, they find people to Katrina. expand that out, Richard, like people who finish. aren't even I'll a part of talk. the campaign. Okay, uh, well, go ahead, let's Richard. talk about another fact. From that same memo on the last page, the last line, the memo indicates that this inve the counterintelligence investigation was triggered by George Papadopoulos in g talking to a foreign agent in London. So that's what triggered the investigation. And the subject matter was the Trump campaign and Trump associates talking to or sharing or working with the Russians to get information on the Hillary Clinton campaign. That's from the Republican memo on the final Which page exactly on the last line. my point. <laughs> This and you know who started that investigation? Peter Strzok used a drunk and guy a lot in a bar of other talking agents. to somebody about Hillary Clinton in opposition, which anyone who with started an that investigation was George Papadopoulos right, and Trump Associates. You. Guys, guys, let, let's talk about when Jim Comey talks about, you know, that's it, dishonest, misleading memo, wrecked the House Intel Committee, destroyed the trust with the intelligence community, damaged the relationship with the FISA court. Um, it, 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 to me, it's rather interesting, Richard, that uh, in truth,
Uh, I think Jim Comey has done more to destroy the confidence of the American people and the FBI. He is the one who created this mess. He is the one who used an unverified, uh, salacious dossier that he told the president to re-up it a few more times. I mean, this is just, it's, it's unheard of. Uh, listen, I don't like Jim Comey like the next guy because I think his FBI reign during his time as his final years of the FBI was very problematic. But I think that takes away from the larger fact that this particular memo that we're talking about here did a couple things. The first thing it did is it basically let the world know that the FBI was monitoring somebody who's been on their radar since July of 2013, Carter Page, for engaging with foreign agents to take down and destroy our democracy. And that is problematic and that, is, and that should not be out because this investigation is not over. Go ahead, Katrina. Yet this guy is still. Yet this guy is still walking because he's around, still under Richard. investigation. <laughs> no, no. It's but like there's the been other indictments, but, but nothing for this. It's the Mueller investigation, yes, Judge. But but here's the thing: we're sitting here and we're talking about these agree these agree these agree outrageous things that have been happening to American citizens. Which American but citizens? But we need to figure out where this came from. Why were <laughs> other people unmasked? Where is Susan Rice? Where's, what is Loretta Loretta Lynch's role? I just Lynch's have one role? question, Katrina: this is Which why American we need a new citizens' lives have been counsel. uprooted you know that what? you're talking about? You know what? I Everybody that has to pay hundreds of thousands of dollars Who? to retain Give me attorneys some names. right now. Because Paul Manafort committed a crime. Mike Flynn, 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 Richard Fowler, thanks so much. And still ahead, I'll take the, uh, get the 30 plus year FBI veteran all this. But next, Mike Huckabee standing by to talk about the memo, the reaction and what happens. Justice rolls on in a minute. Build water.